a great presentation lined up. Our brother Grubbs going to be giving us his mission report for what he's done uh, over the last uh, four, three and a half ish months or so. So uh, I think we're going to be in for a, a good treat with with that information. And I uh, just want to, you know, by way of in case you haven't connected all those dots with us as the overseeing eldership, uh, the work that we're doing here, supporting that uh, uh, financially, and some people also support him uh, on the side as well. Uh, great work there that that you're directly impacting, uh, spreading the gospel overseas uh, to the Chinese uh, Chinese speaking uh, people. Um, if you're okay, yep, I'll turn this up. Yep. If um, if you're visiting with us, uh, please fill out a card and put it in the black box that's hanging on the wall next to the the door in the foyer, uh, and uh, stick around for a few minutes after service so we can get to know you. And uh, last thing before we go to God in prayer, please just remember to turn on your cell phones to mute or silence them, so we're not interrupted during the service. And let's go to God in prayer. Dear God, again we. We humbly come before you this evening. Father, we pray that you will please have mercy on us. Father, we thank you so much for your blessings, the things that you've given us so bountifully throughout our lives. We thank you for your love, your grace, your mercy. And Father, we just pray that you'll please continue to, to help us to never take these blessings for granted. Father, we thank you for the congregation here in, in shirts. And we pray you'll please bless our efforts to spread the gospel to those who may be seeking, those who may be willing to hear and accept the, the truth of your word. We pray, Father, that you'll be with us now for this next hour of worship, that you'll please help us to be strengthened by the message uh, that we'll hear from our, our mission report. And the Father will be further encouraged to support this and all the other works that, that we're involved with in this area. Please be with those who have upcoming medical procedures, those who are recovering from, from procedures, Father, those who may be ill, and restore them to measure of health, Father, so they may continue to serve you. That will be done in all things in our lives. And we just want to thank you so much for Jesus and the sacrifice he made upon that cross so that we may be with you in eternity if we're, if we're found faithful in that day of judgment, which is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you would at this time, take your psalm book and mark number 683, number 683, that is, let him have his way with thee. That'll be a song of invitation this evening, number 683. And for the lesson this morning, we'll sing number 148, Hallelujah, Praise Jehovah. Number 148, we'll sing the first and last verses only, then we'll have our scripture reading and lesson, number 148. <clears throat> Hallelujah, praise Jehovah from the heavens, praise his name. Praise Jehovah in the highest, all his angels praise proclaim. All his soul together praise him, sun and moon and stars on high. Praise him, O ye have not had floods above the sky. Let them praise his name, Jehovah, for his name alone is high. And his glory is exalted, and his glory is exalted, and his glory is exalted far above the earth and sky. All ye fruitful trees and cedars, all ye hills and mountains, are reaping things and beasts and cattle, birds and in the small all ye people, princes, greater judges all, praise his name, young men, 
dance, aged men and children small. Let them bring Francis get Jehovah for his name alone is high. And his glory is exalted, and his glory is exalted, and his glory is exalted far above the earth and the sky. Amen. <clears throat> Good evening. The scripture reading this evening is coming from Acts chapter 15, verse 27. What's 14? 14. 14. Sorry, sir. Acts chapter 14, verse 27. I'll be reading from the King James Version. For they that dwell at Jerusalem and their rulers, because they knew him not, nor yet the... Excuse me. Look for 14. I'm sorry. Excuse me. 14. Oh, I was correct. Sorry. 14 verse 27. And when they were come and I gathered the, the church together, they rehearsed all that God had done with them and how he had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. Amen. <laughs> I'm waiting on the remote. So. Okay. All right. I uh, appreciate the opportunity to give the report this evening. Put my remote on here. No move. Did you do that or did I? Okay. We'll just let you do it, Carl. Oh, I have it now. Okay, okay great. Um, it, I appreciate uh, the elders allowing me to make this report. I've been a missionary for 43 years and I've made, uh, since 1985, I've made uh, 83 mission trips. Uh, overseas short-term mission trips and of course in the last five years uh, our lives have changed a little bit because now that I'm married to Etta and she is from Indonesia we've adjusted uh, our lives a little bit we left Georgia we moved to Texas and so uh, I'm so thankful that we're here in Texas especially at the church congregation appreciate to have a part in the work here and also to be able to continue to do my work among the English and Chinese speaking people in Asia. So what I'm going to do tonight, I'm going to give you a report over the last, about the last three months, but primarily I'm going to be talking about the trip that we made to Taiwan in December, uh, which is a normal trip that we make every year. Now COVID changed everything so that Taiwan, uh, going to Taiwan personally, this last year was the first time we'd gone in three years. And so uh, we were thankful to be able to go uh, this year. Okay, you've seen that building before. <laughs> Me too. Oh, there we go. Uh, this is Southeast Asia, and I know it's a kind, of, kind of small for you to see it. Uh, point out to you at the bottom is my email address. So you can always contact me at this email address. Uh, even when we're overseas, uh, I have a T-Mobile program in my phone, so I do not take calls overseas, but I can receive texts. So you can text me overseas. Uh, you can also email me as well. And so you see uh, on the on the map here, uh, here is here is China here. Here's Taiwan, and that's where we're going to be for part of this report. Uh, then here is Singapore, uh, and as uh, one of the former uh, presidents of Indonesia said, uh, Singapore is just a red dot on a map uh, because it's so small and so insignificant. 
Well, the Singaporeans, they adopted that phrase. So now they call it the red dot of Southeast Asia. And of course, it's a very great country. And then Malaysia above it, this is West Malaysia. Here's East Malaysia, which is part of the old island of Borneo. Uh, Brunei is also here, as well as Kalimantan, the kind of a ugly yellow color there. Kal Kalimantan is part of Indonesia. And they, the Indonesian government is moving the capital up to central Kalimantan. It's leaving Jakarta and moving to uh, this island. And so the government will be on the island of Borneo. The financial district will still be in Jakarta. But anyway, uh, all of this down here is Indonesia. And we live right here. It looks like a little M right here. We live right in that M. Uh, on the southeast side of Sumatra. Now, when we uh, when we return to, I got to get I got to get my glasses on because I'm looking at the pictures in the back instead of behind me. Uh, when we uh, arrive back to Indonesia, this is the airport in Lampung. Of course, we first uh, it, you can't you know you remember the old uh, joke about uh, how do I get somewhere? Well, you can't get there from here. Well, you know, that's how it is traveling overseas now, especially in Asia. Asia. Uh, my uh, airline of preference over the past 25 years has been Delta Airlines because Delta is based in Atlanta and we lived in the Atlanta area for 23 years. But Delta sold off all their routes in Asia. So now we have to partner with Korean Airlines or uh, Garuda Airlines, which is Indonesia or uh, some other airline like that, and the layovers sometimes are quite ridiculous. I remember one one time we had a layover of 23 hours and 45 minutes, uh, which is, you know, that's a long layover. And so uh, anyway, when we finally get back to, to Lampong, where we live, this is the airport where we arrive. Now, as you know, uh, I've been teaching uh, in uh, Malaysia online for a number of years. Uh, we're into our fourth year of having a Wednesday night Bible class with questions and answers. And this course is conducted in English. And so on the 25th of October, this was soon after we returned in Indonesia, I taught this particular lesson on uh, online in Malaysian not only are Malaysians allowed to attend, anybody, uh, just lately Molly and uh, Mark joined into our class. Anybody that can join into Zoom can join into this class. The only thing is, now that we're here, it's not eight o'clock at night, it's six o'clock in the morning, which makes the a little bit of the difference in, in making the class. Uh, as, uh, as I did last night from 7.30 to 9.30, uh, I meet with the Taichung congregation in in uh, Taiwan, and uh, every here every Saturday night, there every Sunday morning, and these are some of the individuals that are in that particular worship service online. Of course, some of them are actually in the church building, but uh, about half and half, half in the church building, half online, and uh, this is part of my regular schedule every week. Uh, just to give you a quick overview of my schedule while I'm here, because it's a little bit different as far as the time goes, but the events are are similar. Uh, Saturday night from 7.30 to 9.30, I meet with the church in Taichung online, and the first Sunday or first Saturday for us of every month, I preach uh, in Chinese. Then on Sunday morning, uh, as I did this morning at 4 a.m., uh, I went online and preached in Chinese in Malaysia. And so that's every Sunday morning while I'm here at four. Now I'm looking forward to the first Sunday in March because we go to daylight savings time. And instead of four o'clock, it'll be five o'clock. Now I'm looking forward to that. You know? <laughs> and so uh, anyway, that's that's Sunday morning. And then, of course, 9.30, 10.30, here at Shirts, 5 p.m. Uh, here at Shirts. And then when I'm teaching at Four Seas College, then Sunday night, Tuesday night, Thursday night, I'm teaching from, uh, let's go to daylight savings time, from 8 to 10. And uh, that's, uh, that'll start again in April 
uh, teaching a course on church history. On Tuesday morning now, of course, we have the men's class here, and that's great, I think. And uh, But before that class, I have a, a Chinese class in Malaysia at 6 a.m. And then Wednesday morning, the English class in Malaysia. And then Wednesday night here at 7 p.m. So from Saturday to Wednesday, I'm pretty busy in all of these different events that are taking place. And uh, I'm thankful that's one of the good byproducts of COVID because we moved a lot of things to Zoom uh, so that we're able to meet with people in other places in the world. Now, here I am in Indonesia uh, at uh, our desk in the bedroom, and I'm teaching uh, in Taiwan, and you can see they have two monitors in the church building in Taiwan, and you can see the Chinese characters on the, on the table there. What do you think that says? Yeah, this do in remembrance of me, that's what it says, <laughs> only it's in Chinese. And so here I am teaching uh, this would have been a Sunday morning, the first Sunday in the month. Okay, back up. Now, just a couple scenes in uh, Indonesia. After we got back this last trip, uh, we attended the wedding of a family friend. And on the left, you see Etta and I with her, I guess, one of her best friends in the world. She went to high school with her. They grew up together. And so we see them. She talks to them, uh, talks to her all the time. But this is uh, Yong Yong is her Chinese name because she's ethnic Chinese, even though she's from Indonesia. So I like to call her Yong Yong because I don't even know her Indonesian name. And uh, she is able to understand a little bit of Chinese. So sometimes when we're around, then I'll, I'll be able to speak to her in Chinese because my Indonesian is really bad. And then on the right is our daughter, Jessica, with her husband, Krishna. And uh, Jessica should be back in Lampong right now from Jakarta. She spent the weekend there with her husband. Her husband and she work in the same uh, office of the finance ministry of the country of Jakarta, but they're in different offices. Uh, Krishna is in Jakarta and Jessica is in Lampong. Now, Jessica could be in in Jakarta, but they're in the process of applying for a master's program in UK. So they want to do that before they change the residence. And then it's very possible when they come back from UK, they'll be moving to the new capital on the island of Borneo. That's them uh, also attending the wedding. I guess I got to be patient. Okay. Now, once in a while, we don't do this all the time, but once in a while, we go down to the main a uh, fresh food market in um, in uh, Lampong. And of course, this brings back a lot of memories to me because when we moved to Taiwan in 1982, these are the kinds of markets we went to. We didn't have supermarkets in 1982. And some of you, like Ken, if you'll remember in the, the Philippines, I don't know if you ever went out to the fresh food markets in the Philippines or not, but uh, this is the way you had to shop. Uh, in the local markets. And so we go there and you can see right here in front, uh, these are fish laying here and there's all these fish here uh, on both sides of the, of the aisle. And then in other parts is the vegetables. And in the back, in this back section, you can go buy pork. Now, you know, Muslims don't eat pork, <laughs> but Chinese people do. And so the people that run those pork stands back here. They're ethnic Chinese. And so if we want to buy pork, we go there to get our pork. And that that's not very often. Okay, let's see if we can get this, keep this moving. Uh, this outside the market, I've never ridden in one of these in Indonesia, uh, but uh, these are a way for people to get around. It's either motorized, motorcycle, or bicycle to push someone around. How much does that cost? Bechow. Yeah, Beicha. Three. 3,000? No, no, yeah, but how much? Like one dollar. Okay, maybe a dollar to ride a few blocks, you know. And uh, anyway, they're lined up there, ready to go outside the market. Okay, now, as I said, the majority of the 
report is going to be in regard to the Taiwan trip that we made November 28th through December 19th. Uh, the annual Taijong lectureship for the last three years was held only online. This year, again, most of the speakers were online. Uh, you know, uh, speakers have figured out, I can speak online, I don't have to buy an airline ticket. I don't have to pay for a hotel room, save money, and still speak on lectureship. And so I was, we were the only ones that came in person from overseas to attend the lectureship. And so we attended that and I spoke there. Then we went on to Hualien, which is on the other side of the island. And then uh, up and finally to Taipei, which is the, at the top there. I think Stan Stockton's been to Taiwan. Anybody else? You've been to all three places. Ken's been there. Uh, what year? Do you remember? Uh, 74. Yeah, 74. Well, in 74, I remember I'd meet some people occasionally, and I'd say, uh, you ever been to Taiwan? Yeah, yeah, I was there in 1958. I said, where were you? I was at the air base in Taichung. And one time we had to go to Elon, uh, which is on the northeast side of the island of Taiwan. I said, did you drive? They said, drive? Are you kidding? There are no roads in Taiwan in 1958. We flew, you know. And so by the time we got there in 82, they already had a uh, in uh, what they call a freeway, which is a toll road. And, uh, but anyway, uh, it uh, even now has changed dramatically. When I go back, we go in the neighborhoods, I have no idea where I am because the neighborhoods have changed so much with the building of buildings and various things like that. Anyway, this is leaving the uh, airport in Lampong. Uh, we fly out of Terminal 3, which is the newer terminal. And we're on our way to uh, Taiwan. I'm just trying to find the sweet spot here. I haven't found it yet. Carl, go ahead and advance with you. I'm getting tired of doing that. Thank you. Uh -huh. I want to save time, you know. I got 650 slides. <laughs> so, you know, I'm trying to save some time here this evening in the report. Now, this was when we were on our way to Taiwan. We flew EVA Air. I say EVA. Uh, if you've ever seen um, a uh, trailer on, on the back of a, tr a truck trailer that says Evergreen, and it's all printed in green, it's got white lettering, that's this same company. Evergreen runs the EVA Air, and uh, it's the local Taiwan carrier, one of the local Taiwan carriers. And so uh, we, had, uh, we had okay seats going, but we had better seats going back to Indonesia because they improved our seating. Next slide, please. Okay, Taijong. All right, one of the first things we do when we go back to Taijong is we eat what I consider to be the best beef noodles in the world. Okay, on the left, you see the front of the restaurant and the name of the restaurant is Leo Leo Xun, Neo Romian. That's how you say it in Mandarin. And on the right, you see the the noodles, uh, you see uh, Edda's noodles in front of hers with the beef on top. Well, I've already pulled my noodles up. And, uh, you know, people eat beef noodles in different ways. I eat my noodles first. I eat all the noodles before I eat my beef or, or if I drink the soup, drink the soup. And so this is uh, in Taichung. And um, as I've learned in many places, a lot of places are closed on Monday and they're closed on Monday. So you got to be careful where you're going somewhere to make sure you don't go on the day that they are closed. And I have been eating at this restaurant for over 40 years. Uh, of course, when I go back now, it's just one visit. I get to go one time, and that's enough to last me till next year. Uh, go back, go back a minute, Carl. On the on the table, I'll keep the pointer here. On the table in front of me, also these are boiled peanuts. And this is uh, tofu, a uh, tofu, uh, gan, uh, tofu gan, that's how we say it in uh, Mandarin. It's uh, kind of a dried tofu. It's not uh, not wet. And then I think that's squid. Did you order squid or something like that? Uh, you? Yeah. What? The ear. Oh, the ear, the pig's ear. Okay, anyway. Uh, that that was not for me. Yeah, pig's ear. No, pig's ear. Yeah, not not. That's not for me. Anyway, uh, so I I go for the noodles. Okay, Carl. Next. 
Now, these are what we call pop stickers here in the United States. In uh, Taiwan, we call them guo tie, which is, uh, there's three different kinds of, of uh, dumplings uh, in Taiwan. There's the boiled, there's the steamed, and then there's the fried. And these are the fried dumplings that you can buy. And of course, they're a lot more expensive today than they were 40 years ago. I remember I could buy 10 of these for about uh, 75 cents. Uh, of course, you know, times have changed. But anyway, uh, we went and uh, ate these one night. Okay, Carl. Now, this is the schedule for the lectureship in Tai, tai Zhong, and I'll not expect you to read that, uh, but all of, because all of it's in Chinese. But anyway, I normally am the last speaker uh, for the lectureship, and so that's at 10.30 on Sunday morning. And uh, so uh, it was a, a privilege to be able to speak there again this year on the Tai Zhong lectureship. We had about 20 to 25 people to come in person. We had between 50 and 60 to join us online. Last year, we had over 100 uh, to join in online uh, for the lectureship. And so we're thankful for the opportunity that we had to do that. Next, uh, Carl. This is a, a sign that I had made in 1985 and still being used, it's been used in different places, but this is outside the door of the church building. The church building in Taichung is a fourth floor apartment walk-up, no elevator. And so Edda really enjoyed every day when we were going to the church building because she had to walk up the stairs to get there. And so if the services started at 7 p.m., we had to get there about 5.30, just to make, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, this says, Ji Du De Jiao Hui. Ji Du is the word for Christ. Da is the possessive word. And then Jiao Hui is church. So Church of Christ is Ji Du De Jiao Hui. And uh, you can see it in the English. Okay, Carol? Uh, this is the inside of the auditorium. They have an auditorium. They have an office. They have a uh, classroom. This is the fourth floor. It's all on the fourth floor. Then they have uh, they have two bathrooms. Then they have a, another classroom that they can also use for eating. Then they have access to the roof. Uh, the roof is, the I guess, the fifth floor. And uh, several years ago, uh, we built a cover over that roof so that when we have a big gatherings, we can go up another flight of stairs uh, to eat on the roof. Now, you see here leading singing. This is Brother Yo. Brother Yo is uh, the preacher there in Taichung. He's been preaching there for over 30 years. His wife is from Singapore. He met her online, uh, I guess kind of online, maybe through correspondence. I don't think we had on online back in those days. But anyway, uh, he went to Four Seas for a year. Uh, we taught him some in Taichung, and then he went to Four Seas for a year, and that's where he met his future wife. And then they've been married now over 25 years, and they have a son named Benedict, and uh, Benedict is an accomplished, legitimate commercial artist. And uh, he lives in Singapore. He, he and his mother are both Singapore citizens, but Ben has traveled to Tibet, he has traveled to Korea, to Japan, to Berlin, Germany, for exhibitions and training. And he has an equivalent to a master's degree in art uh, from Singapore. And he's 22 years old. And so he's really a great artist. Uh, go, look, go look at uh, Tai Jung sometime and you can find it. Now, uh, we had, uh, you see the... There were some people online, you can see that from the monitors here, and we're in the process of singing at that time. I don't know if I did that or you, Carl, but anyway, that's what I wanted to do. Uh, these are some of the ones that attended in the building. Now, when we have people who do not speak Chinese that attend the service, we have English songbooks. And so we usually have the page number for the English songbook so that those are there uh, can sing along with English. We do not generally, normally translate uh, for the sermon. 
we but just do it for the the singing okay carl next uh here i am speaking on the lectureship and you see the powerpoint uh both in english and chinese all of the preparation that i do for lessons overseas i do in english and chinese i do that for a couple reasons number one english is my first language i can read it a lot quicker than i can the chinese for comprehension and then for delivery it's much quicker for me to read an english sentence and translate it into chinese than to try to read in chinese and so i do that for me number two there are some in especially in singapore malaysia who speak Chinese but do not read it because they are not Chinese educated. They speak Chinese because they're ethnic Chinese. They also speak some dialect, whether it's Cantonese or uh, Fujianhua or something like that. Uh, but they can understand the Mandarin, they just can't read the characters. So I put the English up for them so that they are able also to follow along in the lesson. Next, Carl. Now, while we were there, we. Uh, we went to Sun Moon Lake. Now, my wife is not really impressed with Sun Moon Lake. Uh, it's in the middle of Taiwan. We used to go there. People used to go there because it's so quiet. Now, the day we went, you know, you can't pick your travel day sometimes. It rained. It rained hard. And so we're standing kind of in the rain here. But uh, this uh, rock has the writing of uh, Sun on the top. Looks like a ram with a dot, you know. And then the middle is the character for um, moon. And then the bottom character represents the water that you see behind it. So it's a big lake uh, up in the lower mountains of central Taiwan and Nanto County. And so we went there and spent the day. I got a little bit more to show you from that. Next, Carl. This is a church building at Sun Moon Lake. This is where Chiang Kai-shek used to worship when he'd go up to Sun Moon Lake. Uh, this was his favorite spot, along with his wife. Uh, by the way, he was the former president of Taiwan. He's the one that came over from mainland China in 1949 with about 2 million of the troops and all of the cultural artifacts that he could bring from mainland China. But anyway, this was his getaway. And so he was a Methodist uh, religiously, and so they built a church building there. I'm sure he had something to do with it. Now, the English road sign, uh, as you're driving, says Church of Christ in English. But when you get to the church building, you see the, the characters here. This is Yesu Tang, Jesus Church. That's what it says in the Chinese. And if, um, next slide, Carl. If you look at, this is a, a, a some events that take place in this church. If you look at the the center panel right here, this is someone sprinkling someone else with water. So this is not the Church of Christ. We know that from that, that from that picture alone. But it's interesting that had that they have Church of Christ in the English. And uh, so anyway, this is all in Sun Moon Lake. And so we did this for about three quarters of a day, mo most of the day on Monday. Okay, Carl, this is the main temple in Sun Moon Lake. We did not go up and go in, but this is the outside of the uh, of the temple and uh, quite elaborate. Next, I uh, didn't, uh, I tell you what, if you, if you wanna see more pictures of our trips, you can go to uh, our Facebook page and we've got all the pictures that you wanna see in regard to the trips that we make. Also, uh, you know, every month I do a report and there are copies in the back in the rack that you can pick up and then also as you'll see at the end of the lesson uh, i have a blog spot and you can go to the blog spot and read the last 15 or 20 years of the reports that i've made in our work among the chinese and asian people now this is a a lunch this was during the lectureship and uh i don't know what the uh the funny thing going on here but anyway we met here for uh for lunch after the sunday morning service and you can see some of the members uh, i had a part in uh converting this lady uh, she worked at the post office in taijong right down the street from the church building and i taught her husband and she and she obeyed the gospel he did too but 
he fell away. This is Brother Yo's wife. Uh, Michelle is her English name. Her Chinese name is Gui Hua, which is the word for rose. And, uh, and then you see some of the other members here in the picture. Next, please. We left Taichung after being there for a few days, and we took the train to uh, Hualien, which was around the island, and it took seven and a half hours on the train. Now, there are different ways of going to Hualien. One way is to take the bullet train on the west side to get to Taipei, tai, tai which takes about 45 minutes. But then you've got to transfer to the other train from Taipei to Hualien, which is about two and a half hours. So you go up to Taipei, then back down the east coast to Hualien. It's faster to do that, but there's a lot of, we had all our luggage. See the luggage that we have there? We had all of our luggage and we would have had to pull all of that behind us. And Etta has trouble walking through uh, terminals. And so it would have been very difficult. So we decided we'll get on the train in Taichung and we'll get off in Hualien. And that's what we did. We read, rode all the way around uh, on the train to get there. And that's Brother Yo in the picture as well. Next, please. Okay. Uh, now we're in Hualien and you'll see some of the pictures of the Chinese Bible study and worship. This is the a train station in Hualien. Now, this is a relatively new station. They did a completely remodel. They've done a lot of the remodeling on the train stations in Taiwan. And so this is the remodel Hualien train station. Very nice, as you can see. Uh, this is the first place we went to eat when we went to Hualien. This is Brother Wong standing in the picture. Brother Wong is the Preacher there in Hualien. He's been preacher there for about 35 years. I wish I had an hour just to talk about Brother Wong, such a talented individual. But anyway, go back, Carl. Um, the um, the restaurant here is a very simple restaurant, and they have one menu item, one menu item, and it's wonton soup, and it's the best wonton soup that I've ever eaten in my life. And uh, of course, more expensive than it used to be, but it uh, it has about ten wontons in one bowl. You know, when you go to a restaurant here, you get one or maybe two, and it's so salty you can't drink the soup. Uh, but there, it's a light, a light soup, no salt, and about ten wontons, and it is, and they're all handmade in the restaurant. And what they do is when they open in about 10 o'clock in the morning, once they go through all of their supplies for the day, that's it. They close down. And so we went early enough so that we were able to go. Yes, ma'am. 1.30 they close. Yeah, 1.30 they close anyway, but sometimes by 1.30 they're already out. And so you've got to go early to, uh, to make it. Okay, Carl, here are some of the fruits. You know, I, I don't spend a lot of time on the food that were there, but that when we're there, but you can see the bananas, uh, there's bell fruit, there's oranges, uh, there's apples, there's tomatoes, there's pears, all kinds of fruit that are available. Uh, of course, winter time is the best time for fruit in Taiwan. Uh, the tangerines are, are uh, in season and they're big and they're juicy and they're really good. And so, but anyway, this is just one of the stalls in the Hualien market. Next, Carl. Uh, we went to the ocean. This is, Hualien's on the, Hualien's unique. It's on the ocean, but the mountains meet the ocean. The mountains come right down to the, the ocean. And so this is the uh, Qixing Tan, which is a scenic area along the coast. Carl, you can see here, uh, this is the, this is the beach area, one of the beach areas in Hualien, and if you go way around, you see way up there at the top, those mountains go right down, not to the ocean, into the ocean. They go right down into the ocean, and on our Facebook page, we've got pictures of that particular place, okay? Now, I mentioned the mountains. Uh, these are, this is called Taroko Gorge. Taroko Gorge, named by the Japanese, you know, the Japanese were there from 1895 to 1945. 
And so a lot of the names in Taiwan carry the Japanese name. Brother Wong's father, who grew up in Taiwan back in the 1920s, he learned Japanese. He reads a Japanese Bible. Uh, of course, recently, Brother Wong's father passed away. But he, he, he read the Japanese Bible because he was uh, trained in the Japanese language. This is just one of the magnificent uh, sites of the mountains in Taroko Gorge. And under all that greenery are marble mountains. And someone said there's enough marble in the mountains in, Ty in Hualien to serve all the needs of the world for a thousand years. And so anyway, that's that. Okay, now, every week, Brother Wong, Sunday, uh, Sunday afternoon, goes to the nursing home, kind of like Ken and Molly and Cliff and others go to the nursing home here every week. They go every week. And the average age of those meeting in the assisted living home, I guess is probably average age is about 85. And I know in the past we've had members that were 104 still there. And most of the people that you see in this slide uh, are all members of the church. We have about 60 members of the church in the assisted living home in Hualien. And Brother Wong works with them on Sunday as well as a midweek service on Thursday. They also go there and do community service on other days of the week. Uh, Brother and Sister Wong both are trained uh, hairstylists, so they wash the hair, they dry it, and they comb it out and style it for the the not only the members but others that are there. And uh, they have a very good close relationship. Uh, with uh, the assisted living home. One thing about it, Brother Wong conducts a lot of funerals because these people, as I mentioned, because of the, their age, uh, many of them pass away. Okay, this is the Wednesday night Bible class in Hualien. They have some members that have trouble climbing the stairs in Hualien too. They have a five-story building five stories. And they used to meet on the second floor for worship. They had five rooms on the third floor. And the fourth floor was an office and storage. And the fifth floor were apartments. And for a number of years, I lived on the fifth floor when I would go to Hualien. But that's about 85 steps going up. And I'll never forget, one time I went, I got up there, wrong key. Mm. <laughs> I had to go back down. Then I had to walk two blocks to Brother Wong's house to get the right key. Came back, five floors up, wrong key. I had to go back for the third time. And so anyway, some of their members are quite feeble. And so now they're meeting on the first floor uh, for their worship. And they've set up the PowerPoint there on the first floor as well. Okay, Carl, next. Uh, here are some of the ones that attended on the Sunday morning that we were we were there. You see Brother Wong on the left here. This is his mother, his sister-in-law, his wife, his sister-in-law, his niece. I don't know who that is. Uh, then uh, another one of the members. And then this couple, uh, Jared's an American who has grown up in Taiwan. But his first language is obviously English. But then he speaks Taiwanese, which is the local dialect. And then his Mandarin is okay, although he cannot read. And this is Brother Wong's brother and another one of the uh, members there in Hualien. And so this was after services when we had a, a potluck. Okay, Carl. Here are the ladies together with Edda uh, after one of the services. And this is Brother Wong's older sister. Uh, this, these are, I'm sorry, this is older sister. These two are, these two are his younger sisters. And they came over to Hualien during the time that we were there, not to see us, but they were there during that time. Okay, Carl, here's the sign out in front. Uh, again, you see, Jidu de Jiao Hui, Church of Christ, Huaning Ni Lai San Jia, welcoming you, you to attend. Sunday service, nine o'clock Bible study, 10 o'clock worship, Wednesday night, 7.30. Uh, we have a free Bible correspondence course, and we also conduct private Bible studies the preachers, Wang Yongshong, Brother Wang, and here's his local phone number. So that's right out in front of the building. Every week, they also set out a cart. Every day, I'm sorry. They set out a cart full of tracts 
and brochures for people to pick up while they're there. Okay, Carl. This is back in the Hualien train station, and this is a, another photo uh, opportunity. They have a place where you can stand and take your photo before you leave the airport or as you have just arrived. And uh, there are a lot of uh, Aborigine tribes in Hualien. There are nine uh, Aboriginal tribes in Taiwan. And uh, Brother Wong's wife is a member of one of the most popular or populous tribes uh, in um, in uh, Hualien. And so you can see kind of a, an influence there from the uh, setup in this picture area, okay? Okay, now we're going on to Taipei, last place. Now, I wish Stan was here. Maybe he's watching online. Um, oh, he is, okay. Stan has seen this picture because this is on the 89th floor of the 101 building in Taipei. Uh, this is the largest, tallest building in Taiwan. It used to be the tallest building in the world, but you know, it doesn't take long. I don't know if they'll ever pass up the one that's in uh, in uh, Dubai. Dubai. I don't know if that'll ever be surpassed. But anyway, you know, it's a lot taller than this one. Oh, they're, they're building one in uh, Malaysia now. It's called 118. So it's gonna be 118 stories. Uh, and it will be taller than this one here. But anyway, you can see a picture of the city at night. And when Stan came through Taiwan a number of years ago, and I met him there, he wanted to go and to, to see this right at sunset at the dusk. And so we went, and so he has seen this kind of shot as well, okay? Uh, these are the ladies in the church in Taipei. We had a very unique situation when we were there this time because Half of the people there, where there were like 11 or 12, half of the people there were locals and half were foreigners. And we have three Filipino sisters who work in Taiwan, but they attend and they've been learning the Mandarin. But, you know, I used uh, my, I didn't use my PowerPoint, it wouldn't work for some reason. So I did a English Chinese lesson. I translated uh, during the uh, service and so we had three from Philippines. We had one from Nigeria and uh, two of us uh, from overseas. And uh, this is the brother from Nigeria. He was a preacher in Nigeria, but he's working in Taiwan to make money for his family. And uh, he's looking forward to going back in the next few years. Brother Zhao's there in the middle. Brother Zhao uh, was the first person to be converted in Hualien. And uh, later on, he moved to Taipei, he and his wife. Uh, go back one, Carl, a minute. Uh, this is uh, uh, his wife, Sister Xiao. And so uh, now you can go forward again, Carl. Brother and Sister Zhao, uh, he worked for the government. And so uh, he retired from the government, uh, good salary and good retirement. They were also and may still be involved in Amway. And they were the first ones to take Amway into China and Malaysia, the first ones. And so you know how pyramids work. They were at the top of the pyramid. And so anyway, Brother Zhao has been a great asset to the work, not only in Taipei, but throughout the island of Taiwan, okay? Now, you see our luggage on the right. We're getting ready to leave Taiwan here uh, on the left. Uh, on the right is uh, the first CD that we've ever found that is religious hymns a cappella. You know, have been looking for decades to try to find something like this, and Brother Wong finally found one. And so he bought it for me, and I brought it back uh, with us, and I'm going to rip it into my computer. Uh, somebody's going to have to rip it for me because I don't have a CD drive in my computer. But anyway, uh, we'll have access to some uh, hymns in Mandarin, uh, whereas in the past, we have not. Okay. Now, the upcoming teaching schedule for April 11th through May 31st with Four Seas College Chinese Department. Now, Brother Stan's teaching in the English Department. So he teaches Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday, just like I will. When do you finish? 
April. Yeah, so I starved the 11th of April in the Chinese. We're we're on the different programs because in the English, they take their month off in December. We take ours off around Chinese New Year because, you know, we're in the Chinese department. So uh, we're getting ready to start back up on the 19th of February for the new term. But I'll be teaching church history uh, Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday from uh, over here will be from 7 to seven to 9 or 8 to 10 in the morning or in night here. Now, I tried to get a little bit of a close-up of the songbook that we use, and this particular song, 277, Have You Been to Jesus for the Cleansing Power? You Washed in the Blood of the Lamb. So we have some of the same hymns, but they're in Mandarin. So we follow the same melody, but they're sung in Mandarin. Uh, this songbook was published by a, a Baptist bookstore, so there are a number of songs in it that we sing even in, in our songbook here. And so this is the songbook that we use in Taiwan. Here I am leading singing uh, in Taichung. Now, every, every week during the Bible class, all the men lead a, a song. And so I lead a song every week in Mandarin uh, in our service. Okay, Carl. Now, on the 27th of December, this was right before we came back here. I think right before, right after we got here. Anyway... Uh, I taught another lesson on Endivo, and it was on the widow's mics. My next lesson will be the last Wednesday in February. I'll be teaching another lesson uh, in, uh, in Malaysia via the Zoom. You see the Zoom ID as well as the password. Okay, Carl? Now, this may look familiar to you because every Sunday on Google Meet, uh, we're here for Bible study and for worship, and I see two familiar heads, Stan and Ken. <laughs> but I know some of the other ones are there, and you see some of the ones that are online as we uh, follow along in the class. So when we're over there, we're following Google Meet on Sunday, and we're following um, Zoom on Wednesday night. And some of you know that because on Wednesday night, even on Sunday morning, I've got my surrogates to ask questions or make comments. One of them's right here, and the other one's over there. <laughs> and so I'll write uh, text messages through them so that they can make a comment. And you've heard Stan say on many occasions, when are you coming back over here so you don't have to go through your surrogate? And then when I get back here, he said, when are you going back over there? <laughs> so, so I don't know. I can't win either way. But anyway, okay. Next, Carl. All right, this is a picture. I'm not in this picture, but this is a picture from mainland China a couple of weeks ago. On the right is Michael Leong. He's from Malaysia. This is wife June, their daughter Hannah. And this is a Xie, June Jimmy, Jimmy Xie. He lives in China, and he's one of the graduates of our Four Seeds College Chinese department. Uh, Jimmy was already trained in law. He was a lawyer before he came to the school. And he's now preaching in mainland China, uh, and he's doing that full-time with the support of some of the brethren in Singapore. Okay, next. All right, this was right before we came back to the States in Taichung, and you see Edda was there as well, and you see some of the individuals there. They're still wearing masks in Taiwan on occasion, not every, not every time, but uh, they're still uh, doing that in certain parts of Asia. Okay, now this was the 31st of January, again in, in Devo, this is right after we got back over here, and I spoke on why the rich man was foolish. Next, okay, now I wanna just, uh, I wanna make this a thankful slide. I want to thank you for your prayers on our behalf in the work that we're doing. I wanna thank the elders for their oversight, for Stephanie, for all the work she does for us. The, she does the, she handles the contributions that come in and makes the deposits. Now she has to make copies of those and send them to me so that I can record them and we can keep that all straight. She mails out the reports every month for me uh, and a lot of other things. And so I wanna thank her for her efforts. We have, the church of course provides monthly support 
And we also have some individuals who give regularly on a monthly basis. I won't say their names, but they know who they are. Uh, and then uh, we always want others to know about our work. So if you know others that are interested in helping our work, then please tell others about our work. Okay, next, Carl. Here are some useful websites. If you don't have these bookmarked already, the Church to Church website, of course, you need to have that bookmarked. Uh, WVBS.org is another very useful website. GBN TV, a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week uh, television program. Uh, the website is very useful. IBTMinistries.org, Ron Gilbert is involved in this work, and they have six different English Bible correspondence courses available, both in hard copy and online. We used to use those when I worked with Truth of the World a number of years ago. And then, of course, we're already familiar with OABS.org. And then you see the grubmissionwork.blogspot.com, which is where you can read all of the Grub Mission reports every month. Okay, next, Carl. And, of course, uh, all contributions now come in the shirts. Okay, next Next one, I think. Yeah, we don't have time for questions. But as, uh, as the entertainer says, I'm here every week. I'm here every week. So if you have questions, you don't have to ask them tonight. You can ask them on Wednesday. You can ask them next Sunday. You can call me on the phone. We can get together for a meal that you'd like to provide. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, you know, but, but I'm happy to answer your questions anytime. And we appreciate the opportunity that we had tonight to talk about the work that we're doing among the Asian people. And I'm so thankful that we can work together in this. As we work together, as we had this morning two baptisms as a result of the teaching of the, of the gospel, as we've had overseas in recent days because of the teaching of the gospel, also the strengthening of the brethren comes as a result of our classes, our teaching, and our encouragement of others. We're thankful that we all can work together to help spread the gospel to the whole world. Now, maybe if you're not a Christian tonight, you have an opportunity to become a child of God. And if you are subject to the invitation and you are aware of your needs, then please respond tonight. Or maybe you're a member of the Lord's body and you've not been living as you should, to come back and be restored and live once again as God would have you to live. Whatever your need might be, we would encourage you to come as together we stand and say. Would you Oh, 
Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear God, for the day that you blessed us with. We thank you so much for your love, your mercy. And Father, we just thank you so much for the willingness that your son had to, to be that sacrifice on the cross for us that gives us the hope of eternal life. Pray, Father, that those who partake of this memorial feast at this time will do so in a manner that is acceptable to you and that we all will remember your son's death until he comes again. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's offer a prayer for the fruit of the vine. Father, again, we humble ourselves before you. We thank you so much for the love that it took for both you and for your son to, to allow him to die on that cruel cross of Calvary on our behalf so that we might have a hope of eternal life. Father, the, the precious blood that was spilled for us is beyond, beyond any imaginable value we could possibly think of. We pray, Father, that we will always remember the price that was paid for our souls and that we will make sure that we do all we can to remain committed to you. And at this time, Father, for those who partake of this, that they will do so acceptably in your sight. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And for those who did not have a chance to make their contribution this morning, we'll now offer a prayer for that as well. Almighty Father, we again thank you so much for the blessings that you have so bountifully bestowed upon us. Father, help us to never forget that you are the source of all good things. Father, for those who are about to return a portion of those blessings, we pray that you'll please continue to bless them in their giving. That the, that the giving will be done with a, the right heart and the father the the funds that are collected will be used and all the works that we're supporting in this area and that the borders of your kingdom may be expanded forgive us for our sin in christ's name we pray amen <coughs> i don't really have uh too many updates on the announcements i want to start by saying thank you john appreciate that lesson you did a good yeah. job you got it you got it it was very informative, uh, and uh, we really appreciate the work uh, that, that you do. And if anyone doubts uh, what a hardworking man he is, just, just try to keep up with him on your schedule. If, you, if you'd like to give that a few goes. Uh, no, but we do appreciate that and, and the, the borders of the kingdom that you've helped expand. 
uh, for our luncheon that we had this afternoon. We had a really good turnout. I want to thank everybody that either participated uh, in that, showed up and shared a, shared a meal with us, but uh, more so to those who helped set it up. A lot of work goes into those things, and uh, we really appreciate uh, everyone who took the time uh, to extend the fellowship with us. Uh, Shirley Andrews, I believe, remains at Northeast Methodist Hospital. She was having uh, seizures earlier this week and also uh, has pneumonia. Doctors are planning on removing fluid from her lungs tomorrow. Uh, Jamie Long, a uh, missionary that we support, uh, had cancer surgery earlier this week. It went well. Uh, now he has to have some blood clot clots removed. Uh, so please uh, continue to keep him in your prayers. He, they did send word that they're grateful for the, the cards that they've received. So thank you for that. Bill Montgomery is the brother-in-law of Sandy Roberts, having uh, medical issues, had to have uh, most of the toes or all the toes removed off of one of his foot, uh, one of his feet, nice foots. Um, so please keep him in your prayers. Also, we heard that uh, uh, Cliff's brother, Ted, I believe they're in, he's in Houston, um, is having uh, stents put in tomorrow. He's got uh, in the 90% blockage range. So uh, please pray for a successful procedure there and a quick recovery for him. Uh, the Bible's, uh, ladies' Bible class, I believe, is happening tomorrow on Zoom and Tuesday morning, uh, the normal schedule. And we're, we've added men's Bible class on Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. in the library. So if you're free, uh, during that time, if you're able to come in and, and uh, participate in a good Bible study, uh, they would they would welcome you. That is uh, just uh, one more uh, announcement uh, for those who may not have been here. The uh, we had uh, a couple of baptisms this morning. First time I think I've been here. We've had two at the two at the same time. So it was a wonderful way to start uh, start off the day. Uh, Matt and Julian, uh, members from the How, uh, were both uh, baptized uh, this morning. So we'll be getting more information out about them. If, uh, if you can send them cards or words of encouragement, it would be great. Now it's critical that we embrace them and, and help, to help them continue on their journey of spiritual growth. Those are all the announcements that we have right now, so please be standing as we have our closing song and closing prayer. <laughs> Let's sing the first and last verses of number 218. I know my Redeemer lives. Number 218. I know my Redeemer lives and ever prays for me. I know eternal life he gives from sin and sorrow free. I know my know that my redeemer lives i know i know eternal life he gives i know, I know that my redeemer lives i know that over yonder stands a place prepared for me a home, a house not made with hands, most wonderful to see. I know, I know that my Redeemer lives. I know, I know eternal life he gives. I know, I know that my Redeemer lives. Pray. Heavenly Father, once again, we come before your throne, thanking you, dear Heavenly Father, for all the blessings that you continue to give each and every one of us, dear Heavenly Father. We thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for the Bible. We thank you for all the tools that you have entered into this book, dear Heavenly Father, that we can use, dear Heavenly Father, to continue to learn how and use it to do your will, dear Heavenly Father. Yes. Dear Heavenly Father, we just Ask the blessing for the Grove family, dear Heavenly Father. We ask that you continue to put your arms around them, dear Heavenly Father, as they continue to do the work 
that you would have them do, dear Heavenly Father. And dear Heavenly Father, we ask that you bless each and every one of us here at Church uh, Street, Church of Christ, dear Heavenly Father, that continue to give us the knowledge and be patient and long together with us, dear Heavenly Father, until each and one of us learn the things that you set forward for us to do, dear Heavenly Father. Continue to bless us in a mighty way. Continue to bless the sick, the shut in, the family that have lost loved ones. We ask that if it's your will, you give them things that they stand in need of. In these prayers, we offer the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Thank you.